All right. Hello again, adventures, and welcome to another weird thing I'm doing called fixing the Power Rangers arc of a PG. Uh, quick notes. Um, due to uh, something that you guys are going to find out about in about a week, um, I have had to make some slight adjustments to my sound setup. So if I sound, uh, uh, if it is more difficult to hear me or if I'm too quiet or anything, let me know in the comments down below because that means I still need to adjust things for uh, this version of recording. I'm trying something uh, new and um, it involves... Uh, uh, it involves me getting a, a slightly better quality re 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 uh, recording than I have been, which involves me getting close to the mic and blah, 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 blah. So, um, that being said, uh, also a quick reminder, if you do enjoy this stuff, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, turn notifications on, all those things are super, super important. Let's get g -g going. Uh, so if you watched my last video in this is a series, I mentioned that, uh, I really like the Power Rangers are Pippa PG. If you watched... Uh, my d, d game that I ran a uh, little last night. Uh, I mentioned that for uh, the month of December, for Daily December, um, every Wednesday night, instead of running d and I'm going to be running the Power Rangers RPPG. Um, so I really like this system. However, the fact that they tied the colors to your roles, effectively the classes of the Essence 20 system, I... Um, I felt uh, was a big mistake. It caused uh, some issues. I understand the thought process behind why the, 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 they did it. There actually is uh, so, so some uh, uh, there is some reference in both Power Rangers and in Super Sentai that certain colors um, tend to gravitate towards people with certain Kika characteristics. But I don't think it just worked very well for doing that. Um, the roles themselves work perfectly fine and they're g -g great. The issue was effectively just tying the roles to colors made it significantly more difficult to p -p play the game. So my last video, I got rid of the colors as they were associated with the roles. And I just gave each role a different name that I thought really fit well with the theme of the role itself. Well, Colors in Power Rangers are really important. So where do they go? Well, that's where this video comes in. Uh, we're going to go over the various origins um, that exist in the Power Rangers River role-playing game. And I am going uh, to give suggestions as far as which colors would associate most strongly with those origins. Again, this actually fits to the theme of the colors do tend to gravitate towards people with certain character traits, but it takes it out of the role aspect of it and lets it be part of the origin. Um, and I think that actually fits in line a little bit better with one of the other Essence 20 systems, um, the Transformers RPG. In the Transformers RPG, your role um, gives you most of kind of your combat abilities, but your origin is what gives you your alternate form, your vehicle form or whatever it's going to be. Um, and so because of the, 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 that, um, I think tying the colors to origins instead of the roles fits better. It fits better with the theme of Power Rangers. Um, and mechanically, it just works better. The other thing I'm going to mention is Every one of um, every one of these origins, I'm going to give two suggestions for k -k 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 colors, um, because while yes, they too um, the colors too tend to gravitate towards people with certain characteristics. That doesn't mean that every single one of them is exactly the same. A good example that I finally looked up uh, for my last video, um, Tori. The blue um, ninja storm uh, ranger and the first blue, um, uh, the first female blue ranger. Um, if you compare Tori with Billy, Billy was a geek. Uh, Billy was um, hyper uh, uh, intelligent. He tended to speak differently than most others. He would use these really big words. He invented all these different things. Tori, on the other hand, um, was much closer to kind of the strong, silent type archetype. She was considered very stoic. She was considered very logical. So that is kind of a brainy thing. Um, but she was a surfer. Um, and uh, 
other things along the, 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 that line. So while the idea of, yes, Blue Rangers in general tend to coincide with kind of the brain of the group, it's not always 100% that, 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 that way. Um, if you look at Sky from SPD, he was the Blue Ranger as well, and he, again, fit much more into the kind of strong, logical, silent type than he did, you know, the the ingenious, brainy uh, of a person um, uh, to the point where uh, Sky had kind of a chip on his shoulder for a large part uh, of the uh, series. Um, and if I'm using the wrong name, I believe it was Sky Tate that originally... His father was the Red Ranger, and he wanted to be the Red Ranger, um, but instead he got the b -b 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 Blue Ranger and was really upset about that because he thought that he was supposed to be the Red Ranger. And his whole growth aspect uh, through the entire um, uh, the entire show was in the first episode. They ask him, "Hey, uh, if I made this person the Red Ranger, would you follow them?" And his response in the first episode was, "No, I don't. I don't think he's qualified." Um, and then in the final episode, they go, hey, if I make um, the Pink Ranger, that I can't remember her name, if I make the Pink Ranger the Red Ranger, will you follow her? Uh, and his response is, I trust your judgment. If you feel that she's the better Rain Ranger, then I'm going, I'm going to follow whomever you feel is best for the team. And they, they say, spoiler alert, and uh, uh, they say, well, that's why you're the Red Ranger now, because he gets upgraded, because the... Uh, uh, the Red Ranger throughout the entire series retires. It's a great series. Watch SPD. It's it's a brilliant. There's brilliant character work. Uh, this uh, the just overarching story is really good. Like everything about that series is really good. It's one of the best Power Rangers series. So anyway, going back to this. Um, so yeah, let's dive into each one of these origins. I wanna um, I wanna mention uh, the colors that I'm associating with these origins are suggestions and i think if anyone from essence 20 uh or uh, from renegade uh is watching this if this is something that you guys decide to do which i wholeheartedly uh recommend i claim no ownership over this idea i i claim uh no right to um acknowledgement compensation whatsoever this is me putting on the internet right now um anyone that wants to that has the rights to the Power Rangers f -f 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 franchise and the rights to the Essence 20 system, whomever that might be, um, is more than welcome if they ever reprint the book or decide to make a uh, errata or something. You are more than welcome to take this idea of associating the colors with origins instead of the roles. Um, and you are welcome to take my suggestions or throw them out. I do not want any sort of legal mumbo jumbo getting involved in making this the best product uh, it, it, it is, nor do I want any sort of uh, uh, compensation or anything for, for, for this. I'm doing this for 100% love of the system and love of Papa Power Rangers. Um, so that being said, uh, let us d -d dive into these origins. The first origin... Athletic. Um, athletic is exactly what it sounds like. Um, you, uh, I'll, uh, uh, I'll read the, the kind of paragraph description, um, because I don't, one thing I never want any of my videos to be, um, is basically a license to steal content, uh, from a manufacturer. So I'm not going to talk about specific mechanics or anything of, uh, uh any of the, 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 these, uh, Origins, because I want you to go out and buy the book or the PDF or whatever. Uh, these people to put a ton of work into this. But just describing the kind of um, idea, uh, uh, just the description of it, I don't believe gives anyone enough to be able to use this origin without actually paying for it. So that's generally what I'm going to do here. Um, so the description of the athlete. Physical prowess has always come naturally to you, and all your life you've been in good shape. It still takes a modest amount of upkeep and discipline to maintain, but it's never been a hard decision for you to prioritize such th the things. You likely play physical sports, work out in your spare time, and maintain a healthy little lifestyle. So, I wanted, uh, and I, I think this just fits, the very first origin my recommendation for what colors kind of coincide with that origin is 
all of them. Uh, this is the only one that I say that for, for, for but the reason why um, actually goes back to some actual Mighty Morphin Power Rangers production lore. Um, something during the, the, the Saban era, the, the first Saban era, not Neo Saban, um, the requirements to be a Power Ranger were um, you, had, uh, you had to be able to almost look like you might at one point have been a teenager. Uh, because none of them looked like teens, and none of them were. All of them were in their like twenties. I think, I think the youngest of them might have been in their early twenties. But they were, they were all. None of them were teenagers. None of them were were anywhere near high school age, uh, which is hilarious. But, um, but one of the requirements is you had to either be a martial artist, a dancer, uh, or uh, have a background in gymnastics. You had to have one of those the, 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 the three things in order to audition because you were expected to do your own f -f 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 fight scenes um, when you were out of c -c costumes. And that's one of the reasons why the early um, Saban era stuff had so much um, out of costume uh, f -f -f fighting. And it's one of the things that I really enjoyed about it because you got to see some really interesting uh, stuff like Zach's hip hop keto was always fun to to to, to watch. Uh, Jason David F -F Frank's a uh, really amazing uh, martial P -P prowess that he showed off constantly was always a joy to to to, to watch. Um, and those three different uh, backgrounds um, all require you to um, be very athletic. But they require very, very different aspects of athleticism. Um, martial arts, there are so many different styles of martial arts, and so many of them um, emphasize different aspects of athleticism. Um, you can have something like Hungar, um, which is, if I remember correctly, it's, uh, I wanted to say it was a southern style of kung fu. Um, but anyway, Hungar uh, is what they used uh, to base. Uh, the movements for earthbending in Avatar The Last Airbender. But Hungar uh, is a strength form. Um, it is uh, uh, exemplified by these very um, uh, these very wide, very powerful s stances, and everything about it is very much strength-focused. Where um, if you go into something like uh, some of the animal forms of Kung Fu, uh, things like crane style uh, or uh, snake style, that is significantly more, especially if you go with something like crane style, uh, there's a lot of balance involved in it. It's a lot about agility and accuracy and things like that. Um, and you will see that constantly all across the world with various Mamba martial arts that they have different levels of ath uh, athleticism and different aspects of athleticism that they focus on. Now, if you go into dancing, dancing is very, very different. And it does involve a lot of muscle control and things like that. But dancing, a lot of times, one of the most difficult things to kind of learn for dancing is cardiovascular. Uh, dancing requires stamina. Dancing requires a lot of stamina because unlike something like um, like a boxing match, a boxing match um, uh, only lasts for a few minutes at a time and then you get a break and then you have to go in it again. A dance may last for hours. Um, especially if you start going into something like B -B Broadway. Well, yes, there are there are very many kind of breaks in this, but you do uh, two to three hour long shows eight times a w -w 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 week, um, and so you have this this brief thing where you are just doing these crazy crazy incredible amounts of physical activity, and you you can't be breathing hard while you're d -d doing it, especially in uh, theater dancing, because half the time uh, a lot of theater dancers are also required to do at least a modicum of singing. Um, and so being completely out of breath means you can't sing. Um, so, 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 yes, uh, 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 dancing is a very different form of athleticism. It requires a completely different. And then if we go into gymnastics, Gymnastics is an incredibly different uh, th 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 thing um, and requires a lot of flexibility. The really interesting thing about gymnastics, um, David Yost, uh, the original B -B Blue Ranger, uh, Billy, the Blue River Ranger, um, was a gymnast. 
Um, and so was uh, Amy Jo Johnson. They both had a background in gymnastics, and that's how they were able to get the r r roles. Um, if you look at Amy Jo Johnson and David Yost, especially when they stopped dressing David Yost in overalls and big baggy clothes to hide the fact that he had a male gymnast body. If you look at him in season three, when they started letting him wear like tank tops uh, and things like that, David Yost was ripped. Like he had amazing muscles. And the reason why is female gymnastics is uh, very, very much focused on flexibility and control. Um, almost all of the... Um, uh, female gymnastics uh, competitive um, things. I can't remember what they're called. The, the, the different uh, uh, things that you do in g g gymnastics. Um, there is just huge, huge emphasis in control uh, and uh, flexibility. Like those are where you're going to get most of your p -p 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 points. And even when you're doing things like floor routines, um, yes, it is very, very impressive the things that they can do, and it does require a fair amount of strength, or like vault is another one. It does require a fair amount of strength, but um, all that strength has to be controlled into doing the right number of rotations, being able to land it and not move, being able to control where your center of gravity is. Now, if you look at male gymnastics, male gymnastics um, is very, very much stamina and um, uh, control based uh, in a very different way. Um, things like the rings is a, a, um, a remarkably uh, uh, common male g g g gymnastics thing. And uh, the thing that makes the ring so impressive, they're, they're just two rings that are, that are hung on strings. And uh, one of the kind of default things that a lot of people that do the rings uh, um, try to learn, and it's incredibly difficult, so it's called the cross. You, you literally stick your arms out with these rings that are just attached to the roof with ropes, so there's really nothing there, and you have to suspend yourself in the air perfectly parallel to the ground. Like, it is an incredibly, incredibly taxing thing on your body. And if you look at male gymnasts, they're big. They're really, really big, whereas uh, female gymnasts tend to be very small. Um, so yeah, the reason I keep talking about all this kind of athletic thing is the reason that I think it applies to any kicky color is because um, the original Power Rangers all had to be athletes. Every single person, even when they brought in Aisha, um, Adam, and Rocky, all of them... Uh, had uh, athletic uh, backgrounds. If I remember correctly, um, I can't remember her name, uh, but the woman that played Aisha, um, I believe she had a dance background, and then both um, uh, Rocky and uh, Adam are martial artists. Um, so I think it makes sense that if you decide to be an athlete, and there's so many different things, af athlete or athletic, the origin, is such a wide uh genre like even thinking about different sports a baseball player looks very different than a football player looks very different than a um uh, an american football player looks very different than a soccer player which everywhere else in the world calls a football player looks very very different from a hockey player um looks very very different from a bowler like all of these are sports all of these have professional um Athletes that make their living uh, d -d doing it and all of them look very different. All of them require different things to be able to function in that. And a lot of times, really good baseball players can't play, can't function in football. You know, really good uh, football players can't really function in hockey. You know, they are so specialized to their one sport because it trains a very specific sets of muscles. Um, and a lot of times, um, even within the sport, you know, a linebacker is never going to fill in for the quarterback. Um, a pitcher um, is never uh, uh, a, a pitcher is never going to play left field. There, there's such different, um, uh, there's such different roles, and they require such different skills. Uh, that a pitch a pitcher would make an absolutely awful outfielder. Um, they have s their their entire ability is being able to throw a single ball 
very accurately in a, a relatively straight line, depending on how your breaker balls want to work. Um, whereas if you are playing in the outfield, outfield requires you to understand everything that's going on in the giga game. It requires you to be able to move more than any other position on the, uh, uh, on the diamond. Um, because you have a wide area that you have to cover, and then you also have to be able to throw really far, really f -f 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 fast, and make split-second decisions about, okay, do I need to hit my cutoff? Do I need to throw to second? Do I need to throw to third? Do I need to try and get it all the way home? Um, where are the other people in the outfield? Like, they're just two very, very different uh, skill sets, so... Yes, that is my recommendation for Athletic. I think every single... Uh, ranger color can uh, be attracted to uh, someone with the athletic origin. Moving on. There we go. The next origin, Brainy. Uh, again, we'll just read the little paragraph. You love studying, learning, and reading about, well, everything. You live to learn, and you've learned a lot in your time. With all your time spent with your nose in books and such, you haven't had time to prioritize things like how to fight or much else beyond some personal hobbies. Um, first things first, I'm not a huge fan of the idea of b -b brainy people not being able to fight. I am a brainy person. I spent, uh, uh, I didn't get amazing grades uh, in school. Um, I had like a B, B plus average. Um, but most of that was b -b -b because I really hated school. And I had multiple teachers that go, Jody, I just, I don't understand. You could, I remember having with my freshman English teacher, I remember having this conversation where she sat me down. She's like, Jody, you could be getting an A in this class if you just applied yourself. And I understand why you don't. I go, well, am I failing? Well, no. Then why would I put more to the time into this? Do you think I, I don't understand how to speak English? No, you do very, very well. And I, I, you obviously know the subject matter very, you know, extremely well. I just don't understand why you aren't working harder in this. Like, because I don't have to. I have better things to do. She didn't like that, by the way. I'm like, I'm a musician. I, I, I spend my time outside of school playing and practicing my instrument and acting. Like, those are the things that I really care about. And so when I am not in this building... I'm doing those things and playing video games and other things that I enjoy. Um, so yeah, I have a, I have a genius level IQ um, at one point. Um, I mean, I started learning my first programming language in the eighth grade. Um, and uh, I actually programmed my calculator to help me out on math tests well enough that the, um, uh, the math teacher was like, I, I, I showed him the program. I said, hey, listen, I created this program to deal with matrices and things like that because it takes so long to do it. I wrote all the code myself. I didn't copy any of this code. I'll be happy to walk you through how the code works and everything. Do you mind if I use this on the test so it just goes quicker? He's like, yeah, sure, that's fine. So I did. Um, so not a big fan of the idea that brainy people can't learn to fight. I started martial arts when I was in the fifth grade. Um, and still had plenty of t -t 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 time uh, to, you know, catch all 150 Pokemon and uh, learn how to program and <laughs> learn an instrument, uh, learn music theory and how to compose. <laughs> um, uh, I took AP Calculus my uh, junior year of high school and had the highest grade in the class uh, for half the year. And then I got bored. <laughs> And he started requiring us to do homework. <laughs> and then I, because I never did homework. Uh, so anyway, that being said, um, as far as brainy is, uh, uh, as much as it relates to a color, the first color that everyone is going to say, well, if you're brainy, you have to be a Blue Ranger. Because again, we've already talked about the Blue Ranger tends to be very technical focused, tends to be very, very smart. Um, but again, that's not always only the blue ranger and if you actually look at the mighty morphin power rangers um my other recommendation for this is actually the yellow ranger um and again the the role that was assigned to it was basically the speedster the the person that's really fast and really agile which kind of applies uh to trini uh who is the original yellow ranger she used a pair of daggers um and uh she practiced kung fu 
uh, and so was 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 very very fast. Um, but uh, if you actually watch the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, while Billy was making most of the tech that they did, Trini helped him out constantly. Billy and Trini worked together on quite a few different uh, p -p -p projects, and Trini was incredibly into t -t -t intelligent. And if you look into other Yellow Rangers, if we go back to Ninja Storm, um, the Yellow Ninja Storm Ranger, Dustin, um, Dustin uh, kind of doesn't quite work. And actually, somebody that commented on the last video kind of pointed out that um, Dustin being considered uh, a speedster doesn't make sense. Um, his Yellow Ranger was not a speedster. His power um, was the power of Earth. Um, and um, in Super Sentai, um, uh, the Yellow Ranger is actually not associated with speed all the time. The Yellow Ranger um, is generally associated with raw power. They tend to be the powerhouse of the, 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 the team. And even uh, the Zhu Ranger, Yellow Ranger, which is what uh, Trini's uh, Yellow Ranger, that's what footage they use, um, he was still very much a very, very strong character that also happened to be very preoccupied with food. Um, but the fact that he used a, a pair of daggers was not really an emphasis to him being very agile or anything. He was still considered a very kind of powerhouse character. Um, but if we go back to Dustin, Dustin was a comic book nerd. Dustin was a Power Rangers fanboy. That was one of my favorite things about D -D Dustin. Um, and that was actually emulated in Power Rangers Hyper Force um, on Hyper RPG. Um, they did... Um, before the Power Rangers RPG, years before the Power Rangers RPG existed, um, uh, Malika, um, the current CEO of Hyper RPG, uh, she created uh, a, a, a system to use for an officially licensed Power Rangers uh, live play show. Um, that, their intro is uh, the official Power Rangers YouTube channel. Um, they have like uh, videos where they go every intro through blah blah. Power Rangers Hyperforce shows up in there. It is, they are considered canon um, according to um, Power Rangers uh, and Hasbro and other things like that. Um, but anyway, the Black Ranger, uh, who's played uh, by Andre, um, uh, the Black Nerd, uh, is what he goes by on YouTube. Um, the Black Ranger was a Power Rangers fanboy. Um, and I thought it was a really kind of, uh, uh, it was a, it was a fun nod to the fans in general. And, uh, it was kind of an, an interesting nod back to Dustin because Dustin was a fan of Power Rangers in general, though all, uh, the, uh, all the ninjas at the school that they were at thought that the Power Rangers were a myth, which is hilarious that ninjas think Power Rangers are a myth, but ignore that. Um, he was in, he was a comic book geek. He was a nerd. He was a hyper uh, he was a hyper fan of P -P Power Rangers. He kind of exemplifies uh, what we would kind of consider geek culture. Um, had he been around when Billy was a ranger, he and Billy probably would have gotten along really, really well. Um, so that's why I recommend for Brainy, the two um, that I think most coincide with a Brainy origin are either blue or or yellow. And like I said, this is not definitive. You can use any color you want. This is just a suggestion uh, to give you ideas. Moving on. The next origin, comedic. Um, when I was in school, I wanted to be the class clown. Um, I never was. I was a hyper geek outcast of society. Um, but I wanted to be the class clown. And I did my best to um, crack jokes when I could, but I had such crippling uh, uh, anxiety and I had really, really bad self, uh, self-image self issues um, that I just couldn't really pull it off that often. I did for, I think the seventh grade talent show, I did do a stand-up comedy routine um, that people really enjoyed. It was not good. Um, but I was in the seventh grade. So for a seventh grader that had never done stand-up comedy before, the fact that I didn't die on stage was great. Um, nobody cared after the talent show was over. Didn't make me any more popular. Um, but I identify, uh, I identify highly with the comedic archetype. And now that I'm adult and I have much better um, 
self-image issues. <laughs> They're not gone yet, but I accept myself much more than I did when I was a child. Um, I really like the comedic archetype. Uh, the description for it. Class clown, jester, wise... Wiseacre is what they have there. I've never heard the term wiseacre. Smart Alec. There are a number of different terms and names often applied to a person like you. Someone who uses comedy and levity to get through life's little issues. While you have leaned on your charm and light hearted cunning to get out of some situations, it has also thrown you into the thick of things on more than a few occasions. So this is your, your kind of class clown. This is, this is going to be your uh, comedic um, foil to the rest of the, to the team. Um, as far as colors that are associated with this, and I've mentioned this uh, b -b 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 before, um, the Black Ranger um, actually can't, uh, fills that role um, remarkably often. Um, if you look uh, uh, specifically at Adam, the second Mighty Morphin but the Black Ranger, if you look at his portrayal, uh, Johnny Young uh that's the actor that played him, uh, portrayal of Adam, he very much had a class clown kind of feel to him, especially if you watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, um, which again, I understand is not canon, but it really felt that Adam came into his own and a lot of the aspects of his characters that showed up in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie that uh, showed up again when they did Turbo a Power Rangers movie which is considered Kika Kika Kana um, and uh, when you when you look at Adam's character like he's constantly making uh, j -j jokes and um, my, one of my favorite scenes in uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie is when they first get to the construction site um, and they meet Ooze and then Ooze creates those little slime dudes that they fight. Um, each ranger gets their own little vignette where they get to do combat on their own and then they eventually start teaming up and they eventually get into um, a group battle and they morph and do all that. But um, when... Uh, when Adam uh, is doing it, he's doing these like Spider-Man like quips um, the uh, uh, the entire time. Like he's running past uh, this Earth mover um, and he goes, here, let me get the door. And he opens the door and smacks one of the guys off. Uh, or um, uh, there's a can on the floor and so he kind of picks it up and goes, everybody kick the can. And he kicks the can into the guy's face and then he kind of flips over him and does this really cool like, like bend down and then backhands him. And he's a really cool character. Um, so yeah, the idea of the Black Ranger being kind of, uh, the class clown kind of the thing and, and being the comic relief, I think really fits in with, um, his particular, uh, portrayal and, um, uh, other portrayals as you go along. If you look at like the Megaforce of the Black Ranger, there was a lot of him that was very funny. Um, the relationship between him and Gia, uh, the Yellow Ranger was very often played up for laughs and the, 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 the things like that. Um, and while he could be serious, which I think, um, as someone that uses, uh, comedy often to relate to people, um, probably the most useful tool in my toolbox when I do need to say something important is I will stop being funny. Um, and, uh, I have had conversations with people, whether it's professional or p personal, cause I use this in, in both my professional life and my p personal life, I'm constantly making jokes. Um, if I ever get to the point where I become very, very serious because they're so used to me cracking jokes all the time, simply by getting very serious, they will listen to me significantly more because they realize I'm acting out of character. This must be something that's important. Um, and um, I think that's something that if you are going to play a comedic character, you really need to lean into that idea of eventually you will get to a point where you can't tell any more jokes. And those are periods of growth for your character. Um, that being said, the other color that I think associates with this really, really well um, is actually the Pink Ranger. Um, and this association goes uh, directly back to Amy Jo Johnson. The first episode of Power Rangers, um, they, um, they get into a fight with putties. Um, and then Jason goes, hey, Zordon said that, that we can morph these. Maybe we should try morphing. It's morphing time. Ching. And they do their morph and then they get teleported and they go and they fight a bunch of different putties and Goldar. 
and they're able to uh, uh, get rid of Goldar and he um, runs away and they come back and Zordon is kind of talking to them. He's like, so are you all going to be Power Rangers? And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they look for Kim and she's like, uh, you know, I mean, the helmet like totally screws up with my hair and nah, just kidding. Or I think she might've said psych because it was the nineties and that was the funniest joke ever was psych. Um, I don't remember the exact line, but it was that basic thing. And then throughout the rest of it, again, reference to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, everyone else is getting into their Zords for the first time. And everyone's like, you know, weapon systems online, stabilizers functioning normally. And then Kim comes in, she goes, nice stereo. I think the Pink Ranger has, uh, has the ability to have a lot of, uh, comedic edge uh built into the kick character uh themselves again a lot of times uh the pink ranger does tend to exemplify uh uh feminine uh qualities just in general they um i believe they're almost uh almost exclusively a female ranger um which isn't true i think about any other uh ranger type i, I believe they're the only one that's almost exclusively female um to my knowledge there's only ever been one um male uh pink ranger officially um and that was actually in the comics um and they do tend to be associated a lot more with kind of love and emotion and the, 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 the things like that a lot of times they tend to be kind of the emotional uh heart of uh their teams and things like that and they 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 tend to exemplify that but they also tend to be silly um if you look at um I'm trying to think i think it was Car Ranger, uh, which is what Power Rangers Turbo was based on. Car Ranger was uh, was a a joke. It was a parody season of Power Rangers. It was it was meant to be funny, um, and uh, the uh, they had a was it was it that or was it another one? There was one season, and I I thought it, it was Car Ranger, um, but it might have been a, a different one. Um, where they had someone that, that so desperately wanted to be a Power Ranger. I think it might have been Car Ranger, and she actually might have been the white Car Ranger. Um, but she uh, she was like a super fan of the Power Rangers, and eventually she became a Power Ranger, and she morphed, and it was just this kind of really bad cosplay with like a helmet. Instead of like a full Power Rangers helmet, it was like a bike helmet uh, and things like that. Like, it was really funny. It was played up for jokes. Um and uh the pink ranger in general has had kind of that um that humor built into it they i would never really call them the class clown um but there's definitely a humor built into um a lot of uh pink rangers throughout the s -S 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 series um so yeah moving on The next origin, Curious. Now this one, a lot of people might kind of confuse with uh, with Brainy, uh, just because um, curiosity can be a motivator as to why you learn things, as you're just naturally curious. But it is a very, very different uh, type of uh, p -p -p person that is uh, genuinely curious about a lot of things versus someone that is just generally very smart. Um, Oftentimes, curious people tend to become very smart because they're constantly learning. Uh, but people that are just kind of naturally smart that would kind of define the brainy um, don't have to have a curiosity to be smart. They just kind of are. Um, so curious. Ever since you were very young, you never have been able to keep your nose out of mysteries and the unknown. You live for discovering new things, especially if you've been told you aren't supposed to know about it. Some might have called you nosy or perhaps an eavesdropper, but it wasn't really your fault. You're just naturally interested in the unknown. So as far as curiosity, um, I do think that, again, the more intellectual aspects um, and, and intellectual personality traits do tend to lend themselves towards a Blue Ranger pretty regularly. Um, However, I think it is equally likely for a 
Black Ranger uh, to b -b 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 be um, just as uh, curious, and that curiosity generally will manifest in uh, d -d 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 mm. in different ways. Um, I'm trying to think of a really, really good, good, good example, and all of them have just left my head. Uh, as far as Black Rangers, because half the teams I'm thinking of don't have Black Rangers. They have Green Rangers. Um, and for some odd reason, like a lot of the Power Rangers teams that I know, they were, uh, they had Green Rangers instead of Black Rangers. I didn't, I didn't watch a whole lot of Black Rangers. Um, but, uh, it, I mean, again, if you go back to, uh, Zach, there's actually an episode where, uh, Zach and Billy actually have to team up for, uh, a uh, science fair project in, in season two and uh, Zed actually transforms uh, the safety glasses that they're using um, to make them see all of their fellow rangers as putties. Um, and so pairing up uh, Zach and Billy um, was, was not an uncommon th 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 thing to see. To be perfectly honest, pairing up Zach with a lot of different people wasn't really uncommon because, again, he had that kind of glue uh, connective uh, t -t 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 tissue aspect t -t 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 to him. Um, but uh, I just it, it felt um, like Black Rangers in g -g general because, again, the, uh, uh, the Black Ranger as a t -t type... Um, while yes, the, the kind of comedic aspect that they, um, kind of emphasized when they were connecting it to the role is there. You can also get a lot of more kind of stoic, um, Black Ranger style things. Um, and that can lead itself a little bit into c -c curiosity because the thing that causes them to break their stoicism and kind of break their rocky shell tends to be their curiosity in something, whether it's a curiosity in a fellow teammate, whether it's a curiosity in something else. So I think that works. To be honest, to be honest curious can, can apply to anyone, but I think blue or black tends to work um, pretty well. I also tried to make it so that... Um, uh, every uh, color was represented at least uh, three times somewhere in this. So, moving on. The next origin, Cynical. This is, uh, <laughs> this is the Edgelord's dream. Uh, we'll read it real quick. No matter what the world throws at you, it only takes a pair of crossed arms and a good eye roll to deflate the nature of it. You are sarcastic and dry, possibly even jaded from happenings in your life, but nothing strikes you as completely exciting or breathtaking. Even though it hands you new adventures all the time, the world leaves you nonplussed. Um... For me, as soon as I read Cynical, the first thing I thought of is Green Ranger, that kind of lone ranger kind of thing. And the funny thing about it, Tommy was not cynical in any way, sh 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 shape or form, until he became the evil g -g 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 Green Ranger. Um, and then he became very cold and standoffish and things like that. Um, and if you think of Green Rangers as that kind of sixth ranger archetype, sixth rangers in general are going to, they tend to exemplify the kind of aloof, taken back, not a part of the team kind of thing. And Cynical fits that really, really well. Um, the other thing um, that I think can lend itself really well to the more cynical aspect is uh, a Red Ranger, a leader. Um, I have seen a lot of, um, of people in leadership positions that tend to force themselves to be significantly more cynical um, and kind of have that separate attitude as a way um, to uh, maintain a kind of professional distance from uh, their employees and to do what is best for the, 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 their employees. If you, um, if you start to, um, and this is, this is actually management training that is given out um, a lot of, uh, uh, at a lot of um, uh, management kind of convention kind of things where people go to learn to be you know, better managers and things like that. Um, they will talk about it in business school. Um, this is a very, very 
common bit of advice given to managers is you need, you cannot be friends with your employees. I do not believe that a hundred percent, but there is some, uh, there is some truth to it. Um, if you become too involved in your, uh, with your employees, um, it can create uh, an inability to remain unbiased when making decisions that you should be making for the best of the business, not the best, uh, but for the best interest of your business and not the best interest of your friends. It's very, very uh, uh, easy to fall into um, the trap of promoting your friends or, or helping your friends do better. Uh, than employees that you don't like. And so in the same way, um, the leader of a team might try to keep themselves a little bit separate. I always felt that, I think the character's name was Jaden, the red Megaforce Ranger, felt kind of cynical because he tended to be a lot more serious than the rest of the t -t 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 team. He tended to not react as strongly as a lot of the rest of the t -t -t team. And at least for the episodes I watched, I think like the first half of Megaforce um, and then a few episodes of S S Super Megaforce because it was an anniversary season. Um, but I got really turned off to some of the, uh, because of some of the acting decisions uh, that a few of the actors made. And I'm relatively certain they were not 100% the actors' decisions because I've seen the actors in other places and they're much better. Uh, I think it was just a bad director here and there um, that gave them bad advice for their characters. Um, but he did feel kind of like a very cynical thing. And if you go, um, or I think maybe Jaden, um, I think, no, Jaden was the samurai Red Ranger. And that actually fits uh, pretty well too. Jaden, um, the Red Samurai Ranger, did again have that kind of almost chip on his shoulder kind of ability, which you find out in the uh, later on in the season, it's because he technically may or may not be the legitimate Red Ranger. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the idea of a Red Ranger being cynical, um, I think can make a lot of sense because I know a lot of managers and a lot of people just in leadership positions in general that will actively um, put forth a cynical, um, uh, put out a, a, a cynical facade or actually actively work at being more cynical uh, as a way to um, make themselves a better leader or a better manager because they can uh, care about the whole team and not whichever member of the team they happen to be most um, attached to. to, to, to. Um, so yeah, I, I think cynical, I think, can work for both. Again, you can make it for any ranger. Again, black rangers could theoretically work very well for cynical too because that idea of the, the strong, stoic black ranger fit cynical as well but i think both green and red i think fit it most closely if i was just to pick two to make recommendations for so moving on the next origin kind you're beloved by most and it comes as a reflection of your own kindness that you show others you're generally a good person that wants others to excel at what they're doing, and it hurts you to see anyone suffering or in pain. When people think of you, it is almost always with good connotations in the mind. Um, kindness is a virtue. Um, kindness is also probably one of the most difficult things to develop in yourself. People that are naturally kind are remarkably rare. I know a lot of kind people but they work very very hard to be kind and they have to kind of fight against a lot of their own impulses a lot of people would describe me as a relatively kind uh, ba -ba 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 person and almost all of that comes not because I believe I am an inherently kind person but because I have I myself have been treated unkindly so often and because of that and trying to understand why people would treat me like that, I started looking into things like the cycle of abuse and started looking into psychology and realizing that everybody gets treated very poorly sometime in their lives and everybody has hang-ups and things about their own character that they don't like. 
um, that they find embarrassing, that they find that they're ashamed about. Uh, and they react different ways to, 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 to that. So I tend to be a very emp uh, empathetic person. Um, and that uh, manifests as me showing kindness to people that a lot of times I've had people flat out tell me they don't, they don't deserve your kindness. And I go, well, whether they deserve it or not, I would much rather be kind to someone that doesn't deserve it than be unkind to someone that does. Um, and I personally believe everyone deserves to be treated with kindness and respect. And so the idea of kindness, as far as it relates to uh, a ranger, again, when I first read this, the first image to pop into my head from Power Rangers was Trini, the yellow ranger, the yellow Mighty Morphin Power Ranger. I've mentioned before, Trini very much felt like the ethical center of the team. Whereas Zack was much more kind of that, that anchor that kept the team together, whether it's through jokes, whether it was through um, his actions or, you know, just who he was. Um, Trini was the emotional heart. Trini was the ethical center of the, 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 the team. When they started making decisions that were starting to flirt with the idea of do the ends justify the means, Trini would be the one that would kind of bring them back to center. Trini um, was very empathetic um, and uh, constantly felt for uh, other uh, for other characters um, uh, for for just about everybody on the show. She really was the heart of the team. And uh, again, if you look at Yellow Rangers, Yellow Rangers tend to be very emotional in general, especially if you look at the Sentai Rangers. Yellow Rangers tend to be um, tend to have uh, um, a lot of emotions, especially if you go um, with the female Yellow Rangers, as opposed to like male Yellow Rangers tend to be powerhouses. Female Yellow Rangers tend to be very emotional in general. They they might be ditzy. They 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 they, they, they might laugh a lot, um, but they tend to have a very strong emotional center. And if you look at things like Dustin, again, Dustin was a geek. He was into comic books and Power Rangers, but all of that kind of manifested. Um, in him being a kind of very empathetic b -b 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 person, um, which I think a, a lot of people that grew up in some sort of abusive situation, whether you were bullied, um, whether your home life wasn't the greatest in the world, whether you had a traumatic experience um, that kind of shaped you, I think kindness tends to be a reaction to uh, abuse um, fairly often. You know, if abuse doesn't turn you into abuse yourself, which is what abuse does. Um, almost all people that are abusers were abused at one point. Um, and that's how it's, it's a, um, it's a learned, um, it's a learned response. Um, it's, it's a incredibly rare uh, for some, to, someone to naturally come up with the idea on their own that hurting other people is okay. It's, it's a, it's a learned response. Um, so yeah, um, Yellow Ranger was the first one that um, uh, I thought of um, when I read the, uh, the kind uh, origin. And then the other one, again, because uh, uh, the Pink Ranger is, is so often associated with kind of femininity and that tends to be associated very, very strongly um, with kind of that mothering instinct or, you know, the, the idea of just being kind. And if you actually look at pink rangers throughout this as a series um kindness kind of goes hands in ha hand in hand with pink rangers um kimberly was always kind of reaching out and trying to help people um there's actually a great scene in power rangers zeo where tommy has been brainwashed by the machine emperor into thinking that he is or it might uh, one of the people of the machine Emperor. it might not have been the actual emperor um but he's brainwashed into believing he's the king of the machine empire um, and he's he, he's fighting um, the other Zeo Rangers, um, thinking that they're the bad guys. Um, and the thing that finally snaps him out of it is Cat, the Pink Ranger at the time, um, and his love interest at the time. Uh, and eventually, if, if you read the comics and everything, um, or you just watch Power Rangers up to the, the final seasons, um, he eventually marries Cat and has a kid. Um, but what Cat does is she gets up and she demorphs. Um, and she hugs him to kind of break him out of that. And you actually see that tactic with pink rangers happen often 
Um, if you look at Lost Galaxy, um, Kendrix sacrifices her life for her friends, um, which is what causes um, Caron uh, to actually have to step in um, and take the mantle of the Pink Lost Galaxy River Ranger. The idea of kindness being associated uh, with Pink Rangers in general, I think, goes really, really deep. So, yeah. Moving on. The next origin, the Oddball. Uh, the Oddball, again, the description. You aren't like anyone else. Sometimes you say things that don't make any sense to anyone but you and your close friends, and sometimes not even them. You don't dress like the popular people. You don't listen to the top 40 music stations. And when your mind wanders, it really wanders. Some people call you eccentric, perhaps unique. But one thing is for certain, you aren't like anyone else. Um, looking at Oddball, again, my the first thing that I went to uh, was the Yellow Ranger, not because of Trini. Trini, I, I wouldn't really consider an Oddball in any way, shape, or form. However, if you look at some of the other yellow rangers and i keep going back to dustin because i i think he's such a great example of uh a unique style of yellow ranger that still feels good and actually feels much closer to the kind of sentai version of a yellow ranger um i think dustin had some of those oddball um aspects to him you know the idea of being you know a comic book fan and a power rangers fan you know believing so strongly in something that everyone else believes to be just fairy tales that's a very oddball kind of characteristic um if you look at uh the tiger ranger um the the yellow ranger from Zhu ranger um he was definitely an oddball um and the thing that uh in sentai the thing that uh tends to be associated with yellow rangers despite the fact that it's actually not that common with yellow rangers um, but the association that a lot of people make uh, is actually that they're very um, they're very food motivated, um, and a lot of that comes um, from the Tiger Ranger that I can't remember the, the uh, character's name. Um, but he loved all food except I think it was turnips or radishes. I can't remember which. It was a root vegetable, um, and that's actually the plot of one of the um, uh, one of the episodes. I th I think. Um, the one with the American version of it was, I think it was um, Punky Pig or something like that. or some. It was a big pig monster that ate a lot of food, but the only thing that he wouldn't eat, um, they said was spicy food. The funny thing was the spicy food was radishes, um, which a lot of Americans don't think of as spicy. When we think spicy, we think hot peppers and stuff like that. Uh, but over in Japan, radishes are considered spicy because they are. Um, if you've never, if you never had raw radish, it has a bite to it. Uh, it'll clear your sinuses real well. Um, so yeah, that idea of the oddball, I think fits really, really well, um, with some versions of, uh, the yellow ranger. If you look at like the yellow mystic force ranger, he was very much, uh, a bit of an oddball and, um, very much had that, that kind of weird, uh, aspect to it. Um, the other, uh, the other color I think associates with Oddball really well um, is actually the Green Ranger. I mentioned when I was talking about how making the Green Ranger role effectively always be the Sixth Ranger role doesn't make sense because Green Rangers being the Sixth Ranger um, are actually kind of rare. Um, as far as in Power Rangers, uh, for Green Rangers that are the Sixth Ranger, you have the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger, and then you have the Samurai uh, Ranger from uh, Ninja Storm, not the actual Power Ranger Samurai, but the Green Samurai Ranger from um, Power Rangers Ninja Storm, and that's really it for Green Rangers that are Sixth Rangers. Um, it's much more common for Green Rangers to be a main part of the team uh, that replaces a Black Ranger. Um, that's what happened in Lost Galaxy. Lost Galaxy, the Green Ranger uh, was a was a core member, and uh, the Black Ranger technically 
um, was uh, the Sixth Ranger. Um, the Magna Defender um, is considered a Black Ranger, um, and in the comics actually becomes the Black... Um, I can't remember what it was called. Uh, Solar Ranger, I think is what it was. Uh, he, he becomes a Black Ranger uh, a little later on. Um, but yeah, so you had the, the Black Rangers, the Sixth Ranger, and you had the Green Ranger was a core member of the group. Um, uh, and the one that I tend to bring up the most often is Trip, who is the Green Ranger of um, Time Force. Um, and Trip was the only alien on the Tita team, and he was played up for comic relief. Um, and that's actually a really common thing for Green Rangers in general throughout uh, Power Rangers. A lot of Green Rangers tend to have a bit of a comic relief. If you look at Xander um, in um, Mystic Force, uh, he was he tried to play him off uh, himself as kind of this cool, confident, almost ladies' man style character, but he got shot down so often that um, it was it was very much played off for laughs. Even when he came back and once a ranger. He um, was very much more of a comedic foil uh, than he was a romantic lead or any of the thing like that. And so the idea of an oddball, like Trip fits the idea of the oddball really, really well because he is exactly that. He's an alien. Um, he, everything around him feels weird. And just from the fact that he is not human, he is kind of separated from, from anyone else. And again, if you look at some of the other... Um, versions of G -G 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 green rangers you know the oddball aspect um the green um uh lost galaxy uh r -r 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 ranger was kind of unique in uh the, the the fact that compared to everybody else on the team you had the yellow ranger who is was basically uh for lack of a a b -b 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 better term uh and i, I apologize but this is the trope that they were um that they were using for this she basically becomes the kind of uh native uh representation where she comes from a significantly less advanced civilization and so she comes off as kind of this wide-eyed unaware of how the world works kind of thing um other than her everyone else tends to be a little bit more of kind of the upper class like all the rest of the Rangers are, are effectively military, except for, I think his name was Damien. Um, I actually don't remember. Um, but he was a mechanic. Um, he definitely was kind of the odd man out because, like, Kai was was military. And um, uh, the Pink Ranger that I just said her name a little while ago, and I can't remember what it is now. Um, Kendricks, there we go. Kendricks was military. And Mike, who was uh, originally pulled the saber... Um, and then uh, fell down and gave the saber uh, to Leo. Mike was military. Um, so three of the five members of the team uh, were military. And Leo was Leo was the rebel. Uh, but he was Mike's brother. And so all of them had that kind of thing. And Green Ranger was just a mechanic. And he was funny. And he was, he was weird. Like, he was a cool character. I loved him. I thought he was great. I was super happy to see him back. Thank you, uh... Uh, computer. Uh, I was super happy to see him back for the Legend War, but yeah, so I think Oddball, especially if you're playing the Green Ranger, either as that kind of weird quirky character that Trip and Xander kind of felt like, or if you're playing him as uh, the kind of outsider kick -a -kick -a character um, that um, uh, you see with various Sixth Rangers. Like Cam, uh, Cam from... Uh, uh, Ninja Storm, there we go. Cam from Ninja Storm um, did have a lot of oddball eccentricities. Um, so, yeah. So that's oddball. Moving on. The next origin. You will be popular. You're gonna be popular. Uh, the origin is popular. I had to sing that. I'm very sorry. Um, popular is, um, uh, well, here, let's, let's, let's read. You were born to be raised up on a social pedestal by your peers and looked up at 
by the rest of the masses. You weren't necessarily prom king or prom queen, but your name was assuredly on the ballot. Everyone knows who you are, and the majority of people think you're a pretty okay p -p person. There are benefits to being the cool kid, and hopefully you don't take them for, for, for granted. My first feeling when I looked at popular was 100%, uh, and this is entirely because of Kimberly the Pink Ranger, it was, it was the Pink Ranger. Kimberly was cool. Kimberly was very, very uh, c -c 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 cool. She was very popular. Um, I th uh, she was part of the gymnastics team. At one point, I think she might have been a cheerleader. I don't know. For me in high school, cheerleaders, I, I don't know if this is true for everyone, um, but it's one of the few things uh, that... Uh, things like the Breakfast Club and other stuff like that where they totally misrepresent how high school works. Uh, it's one of the things they actually get right. Um, cheerleaders are popular. They always are. Um, I was I was friends with a couple of ch ch cheerleaders um, in high school. Um, and 100% um, they tolerated me. Um, a, a, few, a few of them are very, very nice. Um, and I still remain in contact with a couple of them now. Um, but they knew I was an outcast of society and, and would take the proper, um, uh, w w would take the proper steps to distance themselves when necessary to remain their, uh, to keep their coolness. Um, but Kimberly was, was totally popular. Um, and the trope that they basically wrote her character to exemplify was kind of the valley girl, cheerleader, popular girl. Um, and Amy Jo Johnson, to her credit, did really kind of transform the character from a very kind of one note, single dimensional, um, you know, Calais from the Valley style character into a much more three dimensional, much more robust uh, character. But the Pink Ranger um, being, uh, being popular feels right. Um, as far as like female rangers, um, Pink Ranger is always the most popular. Uh, if a female ranger with the fans on every single team, a lot of times the Pink Ranger tends to be um, popular in Sissa school. It just feels like it it fits really, really uh, well. Um, something that I don't think a lot of people um, understand uh, about cool kids and p popular kids. They've actually done studies to figure out what it is that makes them cool. Um, and they've actually identified pretty well um, the two things that tend to identify a cool kid from a psychological perspective um, uh, is they have a very, very high insight um, and they're good at lying. Um, and what that combines into is they're very good at reading people and giving people what they want. They will emulate whatever they think the people around them want. And because they are so good at reading people um, and they're so good at saying things that may or may not be ch 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 true, um, uh, they are able to give people whatever they want and that's what makes them cool. Um, so if you turn that into, uh, uh, if you take that away from being a stereotype of, oh, the cool kids and the cool kids are always bad and they're bullies and that, if you actually look at them as human beings with motivations and backgrounds and things like that, um, a popular character, you very much could play off as someone that is very hyper uh, aware of other people and uh, uh, very, um, very good at kind of giving people what they expect. Um, and very good at kind of performance and things like that. That's what popularity is. And again, I think the Pink Ranger does that really well. The other thing that I think works really well uh, as far as a color to be associated with is the Red Ranger. Leaders in general tend to be popular. Charisma is such a useful ability for a leader. Do you have to be charismatic to be a leader? Absolutely not. Um, to the point where I have seen people that didn't have enough charisma, uh, charisma to fill their pinky um, be put into leadership positions and just develop charisma and charismatic t t tendencies um, as much as charisma in most RPGs is a stat that you roll 
Um, it is a um, it is a learned uh, skill, uh, and so being charismatic and things like that is something you 100% can learn. Um, and it's not necessary for leadership, but boy, is it useful. Um, a lot of times the most effective leaders are naturally charismatic. Whether those leaders are um, ethically moral leaders or ethically corrupt leaders, charisma plays a really, really um, large part of it. And again, I will not get into politics right now, um, but we have seen over and over and over again extremely charismatic people that were horrendous at their jobs, uh, specifically in politics, um, that have huge, huge followings to this day simply because they are charismatic and they can get a lot of things done and they can get a lot of people to do things because of their charisma. And so a leader that is popular um, has actually gotten over one of the biggest hurdles of leadership, which is just getting people to look at you like a leader. That is the most difficult um, aspect of when you first become a leader. I know I was promoted uh, from a sales associate to a sales manager in the same store that I was an associate before, and getting people who used to look at me as uh, a fellow uh, employee as their boss was unbelievably difficult. And I had quite a few people that would actively fight any direction that I gave them because, well, I don't need to listen to you. You were, you know, you and I are the same. There's no reason that I shouldn't be in your position. So I don't need to listen to you. Um, so, yeah, I think both of those work really well for the popular origin. Moving on. The next origin, rebellious. Uh, the description, punks, delinquents, activists, troublemakers. There are countless different terms for those who just don't like to get along with the status quo, whether in ideology, fashion, following social norms, or obeying the rules. You have never even wanted to go with the flow, nor has the system ever really done anything for you either. You lash out in your own ways and you stand firmly in your independence. You are a rebel and damn anyone who tries to hold you down. This, um, again, the, f the first thing that comes to mind, um, again, if we look at the kind of stereotypical Sixth Ranger style thing, which was exemplified by the Green Ranger, this is a, this is a Green Ranger thing that I thought. And it can be um, a very effective Green Ranger. If, if you look at Tommy, a lot of people would not consider Tommy to be rebellious. Um, but if you look at a lot of the situations that he was p -p 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 put in, he did kind of lash out uh, 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 against uh, s -s 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 social norms. Um, uh, I'm, I may be imagining this, um, but I think at one point he was approached by Vulcan Skull to try and uh, have him kind of team up on bullying uh, the rest of the Rangers, and he kind of fought against that. Um, you kind of see him like over and over and over again throughout his uh, career um, as the Green Ranger, and then as the White Ranger, and the Red Ranger, and, and every other Ranger that he was. Um, he tends to, you know, do things differently and, and, and try to look at things from different uh, perspectives. And if you look at, um, and again, if you, re uh, uh, if you expand the quote unquote rebellious title away from punks delinquents and you start looking into the more activist um aspect of it you can see other uh g -g 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 green rangers um that do kind of fit into that idea of well no i know this is what i'm supposed to do but i'm going to go this way xander's another really good um uh explanation of of this is someone that uh, was supposed uh, uh, was supposed to be a, 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 a certain way and just kind of constantly was kind of doing his own thing and forging his, his own uh, p -p 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 path. And so I think Green Ranger fits in that pretty well. Um, the other one that I think, to be perfectly honest, fits even better uh, is the Black Ranger. Um, again, if you look at the Magnet Defender, um, who 
is much more a typical Black Ranger from a Sentai perspective um, than uh, than most kind of Power Rangers, but Black Rangers. He is very rebellious. Rebellious to the point where ethics are not really as big a concern uh, for, for him. Very much an ends justifies the means kind of thing, which is a, can be uh, a very rebellious attitude. Or, if you look at the 2017 Power Rangers uh, movie, um, the Black Ranger there, Zack, um, does have a very much rebellious streak. He's truant uh, uh, on a fairly regular basis. Like, when you first meet him, he's living in... Um, uh, uh, he's uh, living in, in nature. Like, he's not even staying at his own house at that particular um, uh, to the time. And he's constantly doing things like he he's the first one that goes and effectively steals his Zord to go out for a joyride. Um, you know, rebellious Black Rangers are very much uh, tied into um, the uh, uh, the mythos of uh, Power Rangers uh, pretty consistently. So, moving on. And get a drink real quick. The final origin, tragic. Uh, description, not everyone has the perfect childhood. The best relationship with their peers or a carefree life where nothing has happened that leaves a, uh, that leaves a mark forever. Whatever happened in your past, you look back upon it with sadness, but not true depression or regret. Your past is what made you strong. And you know that you can overcome anything in your future because the lessons you learn from it. Um, tragic characters are a trope in D&D. Uh, one of my favorite jokes, just because of how accurate it is. Um, what is the most dangerous profession in uh, any fantasy world? Being a parent. Because all adventurers, their parents died in gruesome ways. It's always how it is. My, my parents were slayed in front of me by dragons. And that's why I become a ranger that hunts dragons. Or... I was a young child, and I watched as a necromancer came and ripped my father's soul from his body. So I pledged myself to Paylor, and I became his paladin in that m -m 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 moment. Uh, it's a trope in D&D &D and RPGs in general to have a tragic backstory. story. However, uh, tragic backstories are a thing, um, and there are quite a few Power Rangers that have tra tra tragic backstories. If we... Um, uh, uh, if we um, uh, go back to Zach, uh, uh, he had a remarkably tragic backstory. I think uh, an, an even better one, uh, uh, the Zach from the 2017 movie, I think an even better one uh, was uh, Billy the Blue Ranger in the movie. Um, because he was on the spectrum, he was um, uh, 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 abused and uh, he was bullied in school. And then you also find out relatively early on in the movie that his father died. Um, shortly before uh, um, the movie s started. And so that was a, a really, really um, important thing in his little life because uh, his father and him, like the reason that they find the power coins is his father and him uh, used to go down to the quarry all that at the time and, and go exploring for the, the things. So the idea of a tragic backstory, I think as far as colors that are associated with it, I think Blue Rangers in general can have... Uh, a, a high association with uh, tragic but, but backstories because again the big association with Blue Rangers is being kind of that brainiac and smart people in society for the most part tend to be bully magnets when they're kids that's just how it works I'm not saying it's true everywhere uh, but it is you know it is a thing um, so I think Blue Rangers, uh, and again, I, I think um, Billy from the 24, uh, 2017 Power Rangers movie uh, is a really, really great example of a tragic character done well. Um, because a lot of times a poorly written tragic character, the entire purpose of them in the story is for you to pity them. Um, and then when they finally get something good happen to them, you just celebrate so much because you're, you're so sorry for them and you feel so bad at so many bad things that they just, they need to have something good happen. 
And uh, as someone with a tragic backstory myself, um, I cannot tell you how dehumanizing it is for people to cheer me on simply because I had some bad stuff happen to me when I was, uh, when I was younger. Um, I don't personally believe that I deserve to have good things happen to me just because bad things happened to me before. There are a lot of people that bad things have happened to. Um, and I don't believe the world works in this idea of, well, if bad things happen to you, then good things, then the world owes you good things for some odd reason. I've, I've never understood that idea of the world owing me something just because I didn't have a good upbringing or because certain horrible things happened to me when I was a child. Um, and so I think Billy from the 2017 movie, I think exemplifies that really well. He was a bully magnet. He lost his father. Um, he has not been treated super, super well. Um, and yet you never really pity him. Um, and again, an another thing that is an incredibly common trope in um, media in general is the idea of anyone with a mental uh, disability or mental illness um, is there to be pitied. Um, and especially if we talk about anyone on the, uh, on the autism spectrum, which Billy is in the movie, um, is they're, they're meant to be pitied and they're meant to be, oh, you deserve so much more. And I felt a lot of things about Billy from 2017. Um, I did not feel pity for him. He was the heart of the team. Uh, he was the first one to morph. He was the person that was driving them forward through most of the p -p 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 plot. Um, there is a major plot point at the end that I won't spoil that involves Billy. Um, but I, I think it's really sad that we never got to see continuation of that universe um, because I thought there was some really good roots there to turn it into something interesting um, and just due to some really bad planning um, and a little bit of poor writing, but not much. Um, you never got to see it. So I think Blue Rangers can be a very good tragic character. Um, Red Rangers. Um, tragedy um, is, again, something that uh, you see a lot in leaders and heroes in anything. Um, having a tragic backstory is almost a rite of passage for... Uh, for a lot of heroes that turn into uh, leaders and things like that. If you look at something as simple as The Sword and the Stone by Disney, um, Arthur has an extremely tragic backstory. Um, he lost his parents. Um, he's treated like shit constantly. He's in this really kind of subservient position. And then he pulls the sword from the stone, or, or first he meets Merlin. Um, Eventually, he pulls the sword from the stone, and he becomes the king of, 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 of England. Um, that is kind of the, the um, perfect example of the idea of the tragic leader trope. Um, and you do see it uh, in Power Rangers. You didn't really see it with Jason, because um, Jason, Jason really wasn't a tragic hero. Um, but when you start going forward, things like Leo. Leo was very much a tragic hero. He lost his brother... Um, he wasn't able to get onto Terra Venture uh, in the military. He wanted to be. He couldn't. Uh, if you look at Andros, Andros lost his best friend, lost his entire team effectively. Um, uh, you know, that idea of the tragic leader is, is exemplified in Andros. Um, or um, if, uh, uh, if you go even further again, uh, Jaden from Samurai... Uh, tends to have a little of that tragedy with the fact the uh, with his sister and every th thing in that history you know a tragic leader is an extremely extremely common uh, thing to see in P -P 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 Power Ranger or even if, if um, despite the fact that she's the Pink Ranger um, Jen uh, was in the leadership role which is traditionally a Red Ranger role um, and um, 100% had a tragic backstory her fiance was killed and then she finds a dude that is the um, ancestor of her fiance and looks identical because they were played by the same actor. Um, so yeah, that idea of a tragic leader tends to, to, to fit pretty well. Um, and again, that reinforces uh, what I uh, uh, have been saying this entire time and the idea that 
the suggestions that I've made are 100% that. They are suggestions. If you want to make a tragic pink ranger like Jen, go for it. Um, if you want to make an oddball uh, blue ranger uh, or a curious red ranger or a brainy black ranger, you know, all of those things are perfectly fine. I just feel that the choice of your suit color should be more closely associated with the origins than it should be the roles themselves. I think this works better. And something I didn't get to say in my last video, I think, uh, and again, the, 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 the person that commented, um, I'm gonna see if I can find their comment real quick because it was a good comment. Um, do, do, do. Uh, Henshin uh, f -f -f Fanatic uh, specifically um, had mentioned um, uh, the Tokyo, uh, Tokyo um, I can't say it right, the Railroad Rangers. We never got a version of them in, um, uh, in, uh, for Power Rangers, but it's a cool series and they were all trains. Um, and the Hurricane Yellow, Ninja Storm Yellow um, don't fit the idea of the Yellow Rangers this is, this is a spectrum. I think tying the roles to Ranger colors is going to prevent um, is going to prevent Renegade from being able to release more roles that feel interesting. Um, again, one of my big issues with the White Ranger role in uh, this, which we turned into the Commander role, is it shares a lot of uh, it shares a lot of abilities with the Red Ranger, and it fills effectively the same position in the team as the Red Ranger role, uh, or what we call the leader now. Um, and that was because it was based on Tommy the White Ranger um, compared to literally any other White Ranger in the series, which would have been very very d -d 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 different. And so by focusing so exclusively on Tommy the White Ranger, they've made it that if you wanted to play the quote-unquote White Ranger role, you couldn't create a character that exemplified uh, or that mimicked the White Ninja Steel uh, Ranger. Um, or if you go to Kaku Ranger, um, which uh, were the um, uh, the Alien Rangers were Kaku Ranger. Um, um, you know, the uh, I think her name was Delphine, uh, was the right alien ranger and she doesn't fit that mold at all uh, and so i think just giving them names instead of colors will give them much more freedom to create really interesting mechanically fun to play classes that are not limited b -b 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 by um well we have to do something that fits everything like trying to create a gold ranger role would be really really difficult because if you base it off of the Zeo Gold Ranger. Well, he is almost like a mage type character where he shoots energy balls, but he also speeds himself up really fast and does all these cool things. Like he is one of my favorite Gold Rangers. If you go and compare that uh, to, to, to uh, the Ninja Steel Gold Ranger, who is uh, a country music uh dude i mean his his helmet literally has a cowboy hat in it and his weapon is a guitar like there's no way you can combine those two things or or if you go to um the um i think it was the sam yeah the samurai gold ranger um who's a sushi chef in sentai um and he uses a barracuda blade and is massively fast where the other one used music powers and you know again the the king ranger uh the gold ranger in in zeo is is very much much more associated with kind of a ruler, almost mage style, uh, for fighting style, you're going to have huge, huge problems going forward. Um, whereas, again, if you just define it by kind of the actions that the class can take and let the colors be more associated uh, with uh, the colors, uh, it works. I probably should have called this Final Thoughts. Um, but the video has been going on long enough, so we're going to retroactively call this final thoughts. And I hope when I put the uh, uh, when I when I upload this and put the timestamp in, I'm able to find a logical place to call this final thoughts. Those are my final thoughts on this. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I mentioned b -b 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 before, 
Um, this coming Wednesday, the 30th of November, on twitch.tv slash Trainer Jody, I'm going to be live streaming um, the session zero of my four session Power Rangers game that I will be running over the month of de 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 December. So definitely tune in uh, to check that out. I am super excited uh, to finally be able to get a decent amount of time to run an Essence 20 game. I've run one Essence 20 game. It was a Transformers game and it did not go well uh, because we only got to play for about an hour and a half and that wasn't enough time to teach the system and get anything meaningful done. Um, so I think this will be a lot of fun. Otherwise, that is going to be all for me today. As always, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, turn notifications on, all those things super, super important in the comments down below. What interesting color origin pair can you think up? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, again, that is all for me, and I'll see you guys in the next time. All right? Bye-bye.